Now I'm just cutting a hedge round Bally Fundra Loch here and it's uh, a nippy cold day. Feels a little bit stodgy. As you can see, I've reached over and I've done a run or two on the inside, but it takes another few runs to tidy that up. But the field, I don't want to leave it uh, all marked, so we'll just let it go at that. And maybe the sheep that are out, that'll keep them from breaking in here. Now there's a little programme in Northern Ireland and it's called Plough On and it's run by DERA, our Department of Agriculture, and it's for retired farmers of a certain age. And it's an occasion for them to meet up uh, and have chats and, and maybe a day trip somewhere and a meal out uh, with folk of local same mindset. So uh, my story today is not part two of the mass rocks because I still haven't got it finished. It'll be somewhere down the line. And uh, what's happening tomorrow when I upload is one of the men out of the plough on group, David Stewart, he lives a few miles away from me, just at outside Clocky there at the Six Road Ends. And he has told his story of his father bringing them up from down south to settle out near Kirkiston at Clochy. So a uh, very interesting story, some of the wee facts and figures. Hand it over to David now. Hello, my name is David Stewart and I would just like to tell you a short history of the family coming here to live in Northern Ireland and I would entitle this Coming Back to Ulster. My father was born in County Donegal on a small farm and he was Ulster Scots. He left school when he was 14 and he got his first job drawing stones with a horse and cart to lay the foundation stones for the Shandon Hotel and he got a pound a week. He had to shoe the horse and feed it and he thought he was a rich man from that amount of money. My mother side of the family they've come from County Antrim. She was a farmer's daughter in County Meath and she was one of seven sisters while her uncle, a policeman in Belfast, had seven sons. My parents got married in 1933 and I am the third child of five. We were born on a small farm, a 80 acre farm in County Meath, which is three miles on the Dublin side of Drawdick town. The farm was divided in two by the Belfast Dublin railway line which was a blessing in some counts and a nuisance in others. We had a small railway bridge to cross. The good points were at lunchtime, the 12 o'clock train went by and we knew it was lunchtime. At five to six in the evening, the Belfast Enterprise went by and we knew it was quitting time. So we got off and got home. Uh, we as a family were all reared <coughs> as I say, just outside the town of Drauda, and that's where we were all educated. We all went to the Church of Ireland primary school, and my brother Andrew was the first pupil from that school to go on to be educated in Trinity College, Dublin. Then we all went to Drauda Grammar School, which was run by the Quakers from, County, from Northern Ireland. Uh, we were all there as day pupils because 
it was mainly a boarding school and we were known as day dogs. Then I left, when we left that school, I went to Gurteen Agricultural College in Tipperary, which was run by the Methodist Church and still is. And <coughs> that's why I can now go around and I can hang my hat anywhere on a Sunday morning and feel very happy about it. As I said, the farm was 80 acres, but we always lived beside the seaside or three miles from it and uh, along the mouth of the River Boyne. And I could tell you, in all honesty, I know more about the Battle of the Boyne than most Ulster folk do and all the talk they do about it. But anyway, uh, we lived, the farm was 40 miles south of the Mourne Mountains, which we could always see. And now I live 40 miles north, looking south at the Mourne Mountains. So it's more or less something similar along the coast. Now the buyer of our farm that we sold by auction was a small dairy farmer from North County Dublin. And he had 20 cows. He milked them by hand and they were all tied behind the hedge day and night, winter and summer. So when he got our farmyard, he thought he was in heaven. When we made the decision to move, after we were unable to buy the next door neighbour's farm, uh, we decided when we found the right farm in County Down, we would come here to live. And my brother and I both wanted to farm, so we had to get more acres. And the price of land was in Northern Ireland more or less the same as in County Meath at the time. So that was no problem. Perception is a wonderful thing. All the people in County Meath had a different perception about the North of Ireland. And it's a very real thing because the perception was that Northern Ireland was not a very safe or welcoming place to come to and it was known as the Black North and by everybody in, involved. So we started to move and it took all summer more or less to get organised. First the household goods came which was simple enough. Then the machinery was on the move so my brother Fred he drove the tractor and a trailer uh, with the machinery on it that we needed to bring and our, his first stop was Killeen Customs Post, which was halfway between Dundalk and Newry, known by many at the time. And the machinery had to be unloaded off the trailer, checked, and any duty paid on certain items, then reloaded, and off he went. So on his way, on the two-day trips, he was stopped several times by the beast specials, which were in force at the time in the country and they asked him for ID, which he sometimes had, sometimes hadn't. But after that, they looked at him out of curiosity more than anything else, because they'd never seen a family on the move. They must have thought we were all itinerants or something, we don't know. That was the machinery, moved north, then came the livestock. Now we're very fortunate on the transport of the livestock because we had a man called Jimmy McClelland who lived in Portaferry and he was a cattle dealer and had lorries on the road. Now we knew him in County Meath because we had land rented beside where he had hundreds of acres of land rented. So he did the driving of the stock. Same thing when he came to Killeen Customs Post, the stock were all taken off the lorry, checked, ear tagged, stamped and then they had to stay overnight, the milk cows and all, and then come back the next morning for them and bring them home. So after that then, we moved in and the first week after we were here, there came a terrific storm and the neighbors all lost their barley. Every head was blown on the ground and they had no harvest. So that was, a baptism of fire when we came here. We asked, was the weather always like this? And they said, no, this was only a sort of a mild puff of wind we were getting. So then, unknowns to us, the whole thing turned into 
a very steep learning curve. Uh, things were so different here in County Down. First, we had to get driver's licences. Now, in the South at the time, when you became of age, you automatically just applied for a licence and you got it. So we all had licences, but no, never had a test. So we all applied for tests. My brother Fred passed his test first time. I passed my test second time. And my father passed his test after five times. Then father had to take out citizenship because at the time we were British subjects. Anyone born before 1949 was automatically a British subject. But for my sister Margaret to go to Stranmillis Training College to become a teacher, father had to be a citizen at the time, so he took out his citizenship papers. Then we had to find all the new, we had to get a new bank, we had to get new companies to deal with for meal, fertilizer, and all the things that farmers need. So it took a short time to do that really. Then we moved on and we joined the Ulster Farmers Union, uh, Upper Ards Branch, Port of Ferry, and we've been members ever since. Fred and I joined Ballywater Young Farmers and uh, run by the wonderful Mrs McAdam at the time and we're all encouraged to do public speaking and stock judging which I think has stood us in good stead ever since. Right, we also joined the RUAS and we showed blonde cattle for a number of years at it and uh, which was found to be very enjoyable. Now, in around the year 2000, we were the first winners of the new competition of winter barley and uh, then we won the over 1,000 tonnes of silage making, the large silage making group. So we've had modest success, but we're not really into competitions. Uh, then we found the next thing was the biggest problem was the language barrier. Because you may think I've got an accent, but you just want to live near Portavogi and you'll, re you'll really know what an accent is. Uh, now, when I went to school, we learned Irish and we had to learn Irish. And if you did your subjects like mathematics and history through Irish, you got a pass mark of 30. Whereas if you did it in English, it was 40. So the Irish was useful at times. It was very helpful to me. When you come to an area like this in the yards, uh, it's a learning curve, big learning curve for language. Because the dialect, you have to pick up the dialect very quickly. And it's, it's the meaning of the words which change so much. Uh, farming terms, you have words like headland in the south of Ireland, they never called anything else. Here it's a head rig, it's a land end, it could be anything. Then you move on, you've got a, a ditch in the south of Ireland, it's here, it's a shuck. And uh, a lane in the south of Ireland is a loanin here. And it goes on and on, then you get to the Port of Ogie language of uh, what they, all the fishermen and all they would talk about, I would call things trousers, they would call them bricks. Then you've got a young child, they call it a wain or a bairn. And then if you've got a couple of things, it's a wheen of things. So the meaning of words can change so much with just the dialect and what they mean and the shortness of them. So we've got to grips with most of the words, but I'm still learning. And uh, that's what I'll all say about that. So at one stage, when we came here first, a neighbour asked my father, what were our neighbours like in County Meath? And he said, we had the most excellent neighbours one could have. Well, he says, then you'll find the same here in the Ards Peninsula. So we have found that 
Farming has been very good to us as a family and the neighbours have been very good and kind to us and where better could you farm than in the Arch Peninsula.